I wanted to share a little bit tonight about one aspect of Swami's service that has been extremely meaningful to me, and that's the writing of all the music that he's given us. I feel like it's one of the deepest ways that he shared with us because he has, even more than in his talks, except perhaps later in his life, he, sh he bared his heart and his soul to us in that music. The lyrics, even the music itself, has such sweetness, such longing for God contact, such dedication to his guru and to the path. It comes out, I think, more in music even than when he speaks, except, as I said, perhaps in the last few years of his life when his talks got to be less about the teachings per se and more just about him expressing God's love and joy to all of us. I first met Swami in 1978 when he was taking a tour around the U.S. and uh, he had with him a group of singers. I think Durga and Vidura were in that group and probably some other, a few others here. And I don't remember anything Swami said that night. I couldn't tell you anything about what he talked about, any particular phrase, nothing. I remember the music. I remember how deeply touched I felt, not just by the words, but also by the music itself. It was so deep, so sweet, and so peaceful, so full of calm faith is what came across to me. And I, they had a little book table there, and a few items were being sold. This was the very early days, so there were not the zillions of products that we have now, just a few things. And one of the things they had was a cassette tape of this group of singers singing some of Swami's music. And I purchased that cassette tape, and I played it every day until it broke. <laughs> if you all know about cassette tapes, you know they don't have the, the durability of our current forms of music. And then when I moved to, to Ananda in about uh, 41 years ago, I had the opportunity to be closer to the music. And the music, of course, had evolved. Swami had written more songs, had created uh, instrumental pieces that I didn't know existed. There was so much that he had to offer through the music. And part of my sadhana all these years has been to listen to and or sing Swami's music every day. It's a really wonderful thing. I, for me, it's been life-changing. It's especially useful if you have times when you really can't meditate, or you don't have enough time to go deeply into your meditation, or your meditation is dry, or your mind won't stop. Music can bring you back into the center of your being, especially this divine music that Swami has channeled to us. It's meant so much to me over the years in so many different circumstances. I remember uh, working on the lawsuit uh, for a number of years, and we basically worked seven days a week, 12 hours a day during that time. Well, by the time you got to sit in the meditation room, there wasn't much left. <laughs> but there was always Swami's music. And now I'm a caregiver for my husband, and I don't have much time. My day is full from morning to end. But if I carry that music with me throughout the day, I can stay uplifted, I can stay connected, I can feel Swami's energy, I can feel his dedication to his guru and to these teachings, and then I can pull that into myself. I can feel it, I can feel it growing in myself. These songs that were sung tonight, I think are very special songs of Swami's. They're in that category of him sharing deeply his own inner yearning for God and his faith that God is there for him, God's call within, that's God calling to the soul. I live without fear. As Melody said, Swami did live fearlessly. There was nothing that ever shook him. Again in the lawsuit, I saw him attacked verbally, almost physically at times, and he never lost his calm inner peace. He stayed strong, he stayed clear, he stayed true to himself, no matter what was thrown at him. And when I had to get up on the witness stand and testify, that gave me courage. I really could feel that he had surrounded all of us, had, had shown all of us how to live 
in that time. And I really think that song, I Live Without Fear, it might be construed to be about death, but Swami wrote that song when he was only 59 years old. And I don't think it was about death. I think it was about living without fear, no matter what darkness comes into our life. So there's a lot that you can get out of Swami's music. Even if you just listen to the music itself, it's so uplifting, it's so heart-touching, it's so meaningful to us as spiritual beings because it's divine music. He's, it came to him, he never talks about, he says my music, but he also says, this isn't my music. This music was given to me. Well, who gave it to him? Master, God gave it to him. So when we tune into that music, we also can feel that connection that Swami had with Master. We can take that into our discipleship. I'd highly recommend, I'm sure all of you do listen to Swami's music, do it more. <laughs> sing it, even if you're not a singer, sing it at home. Sing it when there's community sing-alongs. It'll help change your life. It just is such a remarkable gift that he's given us. So that's what I wanted to say about, about Swami and his discipleship. Just what, how many ways he's given us to learn to be a disciple. He's given us meditation. He's given us the community. He's given us all the writings and the philosophy. And he's given us this divine music. Thank you, Swamiji.